Um, want to explain a little bit about the process because we do have some people here who have not been to wise presentations before. So actually just kind of talking to you guys. Um, so there are many different parts to the presentation. Uh, first the mentor is going to introduce the student and then the student will do the presentation. After the presentation anyone can ask any questions they wish to ask. After the Q&A then I'm going to ask that the visitors please leave and we're left behind with the student the four evaluators and the mentor. And that's when you get to hear terrific things about your journals, your research, and your presentation. So that was me as the coordinator. Now, hi everybody, <laughs> I'm the student's mentor. So I was their sponsor as well. This has been quite an experience. Well, it's been a four years worth of experience here. Um, I've known Jen from the beginning uh, as obviously her director. This year was awesome to be able to teach her in the English class, and then I was so honored for her to ask me to be her mentor, and then to be her sponsor on top of that was just the icing on the cake. As you saw, I think all of you were there at the performance, uh, most of you were, it was really terrific performance. Um, lots of wonderful, wonderful scenes that she directed, and now she's going to explain all about the process, how she got it all going, why she did, and so on. So I give you blessing. I give you Jen Morris. So there was one announcement I forgot to make before we did the performance, which I should have. Sarah Tavio, who was supposed to be in my performance, has a 101 fever last check, so she was not in the show today, and I took her part. So, but it said her in the program, but I did. Just putting it out there. So, so I did an independent project, and the way I came up with my idea for my project was, well, I like theater, and I like being in shows, so I figured, hey, why not direct a show? So I was looking around for a show to direct, and I was, my original plan was to do a real play, and like have casting where there's a main character, a couple of supporting, a couple of characters who have two lines, and then I ran into a couple of problems. One is that usually when you do a play like that, you have to pay the rights, which can get expensive, and I didn't want to have to pay money for it. And then over the summer, I took I had the amazing opportunity to take acting classes, and I went to a theater camp called Stage Draw Manor, at which I saw a thing that they have called players, which is basically what we did today. We have a bunch of scenes, except it's about an hour and a half long, and everyone plays about two or three parts. But it's very awesome, and going to see that, I was like, wow, you can go play, but have not like a real play. You can do a performance of different scenes. And I really liked that idea, because it meant that there was no one who had like two words to say, and that's it. And they sit through all these rehearsals so that they can go do their two lines, and that's it. And I love all my people who were in it. And so I didn't want to, one, have a person have so little to do where they could be doing a few parts. So I broke it up, and I had all the scenes. And choosing scenes and casting. Over the summer, with taking acting classes and watching players, and I had friends who were in players, I started compiling a list of scenes to do, to include in my show. Different plays, different ideas, uh, people talking about, oh, I was in this play last winter, it was really fun, and there was a scene with these two people and just talking about something. I said, oh, that sounds like something I can use for the project, and I wrote it down. So I had this long list of stuff, and then I got them all from the library, and I read through most of them. And then I got a, the, 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 sorry, I asked all my friends, and I asked the people in the courses, I said, I'm doing a wise project, will you please sign up when you're the project? And everyone signed up, and thankfully I knew everyone who had signed up, so I didn't really need to audition everybody. And then I cast it. And the way I cast was I didn't want to have, uh, I tried to cast based on the actor. I said, who can they play? Not, um, like, what part is this person capable of playing, not having a set list of parts and saying, okay, who can play this part? But I had a person, and I found the part that was best for them. I had this jigsaw puzzle in front of me with everyone, and the different plays I got from the library, which was a very long list, and I ended up using about a third 
of the original things I got from the library. And then I made a Facebook page and I invited everybody and I announced, all right, this is the cast. We start meeting on Monday. Let's do this. And production. The f oh, come on. <laughs> okay. Production. So the first thing I did in rehearsals is I had everyone read through the scene and I was like, do you like it? And they said, I like it. So then we went through the scene and line by line we figured out what was going on in the scene, what was the arc of the scene, what were the intentions behind each line in the scene, basically picking it into a little, 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 little things. And then after that we just, we got it on its feet, we did a couple of little exercises, and then I blocked it and we just rehearsed it and rehearsed it and rehearsed it until everything was good, people were off book, and everything happened. <laughs> research. So also part of the project is you have to have a research topic. And I originally had decided, oh, I'm going to research method acting. And I'm going to do all these great exercises with everyone and have this really great show. And then that fell to pieces. Because, well, mostly because we didn't have enough time. If we had done the whole thing with the whole method acting idea behind it, I probably would have been able to do twice what I actually did rehearsal wise, so I had a time limit. So then I said, all right, what's happening now in theater? And that's what I then researched. So I went to shows, and some shows afterwards at a talk back were the autistic staff or the directors, sometimes the actors, and you could ask them questions, and they'd answer everyone's questions, and you just get to sit there and listen to these people talk about what they've done. And then I went online, and I looked up what critics said, because critics Really, I think they're what make and break a show. The critics, if they, everyone says, oh, this show is really good, then the people who read what they say say, oh, I'm going to go see the show. But if all the critics say, oh, God, the show is awful, never see it, don't bother, no one's going to show the clip, the show's going to close. So I read that because I think they're really what run the business. And I did get to see shows. I saw a lot of shows. And for this, I really have to thank my mom because she is a genius and she can find tickets and discounts and everything. I don't understand. She's a goddess. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we did get to see a lot of shows. And I think the hardest part for me after seeing a show was saying, what did that teach me? I just would sit there and I'd be like, oh, wow, it was really good. <laughs> but afterwards, and then I'd say, well, what did they do that makes this so good? What did they do that really makes it a fun show to watch, that makes it interesting, that makes it unique, and what makes them the people who are working actors. And to conclude, I need a stage manager. Really, God, I need a stage manager. I think I was okay, well, I think I was good with the artistic part of it and coming up with what was happening and directing but I got off topic sometimes, and really sometimes I needed somebody to grab me and say, Jen, you're focusing too much on this little thing. Stop focusing on it. Blah. And so that was something that I would have loved to have. Just a partner, somebody to double check me a little bit more than I had. But otherwise, I think it was a really fun project to do. And I had a lot of fun. I have to thank Schneider, who is my fabulous mentor and my fabulous sponsor and fabulous wise coordinator. I have to thank my mom and dad for letting me do everything that I needed to do for my project. I have to thank my fabulous actors because you guys were amazing at that episode would have been nowhere. And Pen Hud for having us and everyone who came to see us today, thank you. Okay, questions? Yes? Do you think this enhanced your love of directing, or did it help you realize that this isn't something you'd want to do in the future? I think this would be something I'd like to do again in the future. In college, maybe, I'd have to try again. I don't know. I feel more at home being an actor and being told what to do, I guess, than telling other people to do what I want them to do. Yes? 
What does assigning a verb to each line mean? Oh, thank you. So there is this amazing guy named Stanislavski. And he was the one who really started method, method acting in an art theater in Russia. And one of the things he would do with his actors was he would have roundtable chats and he would talk to them about what was going on in the scene and who's really the first person to do what we really think of acting today. Before that, it was more along the lines of the play, how it's written, and people just saying the word in a beautiful manner and performing but not really acting the way you think of today. It seemed fake. So he went through and he had each person on each line that they had what is the verb? So on this line, I say, I hate you. What are you trying to say? What are you trying to get that other person to think with the I hate you? Do you want them? What are you trying to say? What is the verb? What is the action behind this word? I hate you. You're berating them. You're, you are trying to make them feel bad about themselves. You're trying to make them leave you. What is the inflection behind the line, basically? And I had them go through at each line, what are you trying to say with this line? Anything else? Okay. Oh, Rosie. Um, how did you decide to cut the scenes? Like, what made you choose the different parts that you put together? I kind of cheated a little with the cuts for the scenes. Uh, most of these scenes were stuff I had seen before, that I had seen other people doing. And also, I read through some of the scenes and I said, okay, what is about five minutes? What's a five minute cup? And then some of the scenes, like the BFF scene, that was the scene itself. It was this scene and then it's blacked out the next scene. So that was what went up from BFF. But that's about what I did. Gigi? When you were cutting them, did you read it out loud to yourself or just? Um... I did, actually, a couple of times in the library and I got really books. That would be healed. Anything else? Other than wanting a stage manager, is there anything else that you've learned about yourself as a director or doing the project that you would like to share yeah. with us? Actually, I learned that I can really get obsessive about little details. Like, every once in a while, I do, I'd be directing people and I'd give them notes and I was like, I don't like the way you say this word <laughs> in this line. <laughs> <laughs> and afterwards, I'd go home and I'd say, why did I say that? They can make choices, Jennifer. What are you doing? So that's one thing I found about myself. And also that I'm really bad at scheduling myself. And that's really what I think I need to be a stage manager for, someone to double check me and someone to help me schedule. And then the flip side, what good things did you learn about yourself through this? I learned that I can do something like this, <laughs> that I am capable of directing and I learned that I love theater, which I already know, but I learned that I love all parts of theater, I guess. Where are you going to school next year? I'm going to Oklahoma City University okay. to do a double major in musical theater and vocal performance. Very good. Do that. Where all the tornadoes are right now. Yeah. <laughs> so a question in the back? It's not so much a question, I just want to acknowledge the actors for doing a fabulous job. I mean, I'm, I'm totally, yes. And Jen, I think you did a fabulous job as well. Of course, I have absolutely no bias whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> that having been said, I think you all did a great job. Thank you, Jen. And, and following up on that, you know, having done WISE for many years and seeing many independent projects, you followed through and your actors followed through so beautifully from beginning to end. Because you know, we had a conversation about you can't really depend on high school students to be there all the time to all do nice. everything you want. <laughs> and you know, we've had issues with this in the past, so keep that in mind. But I think you organized it, even though you said you didn't, I think you did organize it really well because you had small scenes. You didn't have everyone there on the same days. Um, and you, you use time wisely. Can you just tell them when you rehearsed? I rehearsed when these guys were free. The first thing I did when I asked them to sign up is I said, okay, give me your name, give me your cell phone number and your email, and 
what free periods you have during the day and what days you're free after school. And then I met with each scene about one in a 40 minute period during the day and maybe one after school for about 40 minutes, about half hour to an hour about after school. And we rehearsed and I tried to meet with everyone once a week, didn't get there all the time. And then later on I met with two groups at a time and they helped each other like, oh, they, because they noticed things because I've been working with them for maybe two or three weeks before and they noticed things seeing it for the first time that I've been noticed in the past week. Gingy, did you ever feel like under pressure since um, Mrs. Schneider was your uh, mentor since no. she is like a really fantastic <laughs> director? And she is a really fantastic director. Did you ever feel like it was like, a lot of pressure to work under um, Mrs. Schneider who has done no. it so many times? No, because she's Schneider. She's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> understanding. I mean, she helped me a lot, but she never made me feel like I had to live up to a certain standard. It was just what I'm doing. She's very nice. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you.